Coming up on Mountain News this morning, an animal shelter is raising awareness for the dogs they have taken in from abuse. And there's an interstate effort to clean rivers in our region. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfee. We are coming up on 6.30 on Tuesday, May 21st. Now let's go on ahead and send it over to meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast this morning. Good morning, Olivia. Good morning, everyone. Good start to our election day. 57 outside our door here at WYMT. Got a scattering of some clouds and a little bit of fog trying to develop. And well, some of us have seen the fog develop a little to a greater extent. A little to a greater extent. Didn't make sense, but that's okay. I'm, I'm running on caffeine because of calling play-by-play -play with flag football for girls last night. Uh, visibility at three miles. Not that that's an excuse. Three mile visibility at Ashland this morning, Jacksboro the same deal, and we'll continue to see these fluctuations regarding some fog and visibility issues for some locales as we rock and roll through this Tuesday morning drive into work and school. Temperatures this morning very pleasant, maybe a touch cool as you make your way toward Clintwood and Grundy. And here are the clouds that have been moving across the region over the last three to six hours, just a little bit longer. And then we're end up uh, having an abundant amount of sunshine today calling it sunny to partly cloudy. One little exception, the risk of a pop-up shower this afternoon, a high late today, up to 86. More about the First Alert 7-day forecast coming up in just a few moments. Olivia? Thank you, Tim. In the past few weeks, we have brought you multiple stories out of Powell County where animals have been rescued from homes and their owners have faced charges of animal abuse or cruelty. Jessica Umbro has more from the Powell County Animal Shelter and how they are raising awareness about the animals they house on yesterday's National Rescue Dog Day. We're on a tight budget most of the time, so we do depend on donations, but we were limited to a small shelter based on our population. Teresa Stidham, shelter assistant at the Powell County Animal Shelter, says larger batches of dogs and cats have seen a lot before finding their way to safety. They came from the situation where we had to seize. Uh, it ended up, we thought it was going to be like 22 animals, it ended up being about 25. We are not allowed to do anything with them until the case is settled. So that takes up space too. We've had four court cases at one time, and that's common. That's common these days anyway. Stidham says that some animals, such as Bella, have been able to find a home after experiencing neglect. She's adopted now. She's thriving. She's doing great. Uh, these are some of her offspring, these three down here. But until animals are fully surrendered by their owners. We have to hold on to them until the courts decide um, whether or not the dogs go back to the owners. Uh, if the owners were to surrender them, then we would be free to place them. So this is Amber. She's a very friendly girl. She says it's why the shelter has to turn away personal surrenders. We're telling people if you can hold on to your personal pet until we can make room or until we have room, that's kind of what we're faced with right now. In Powell County, Jessica Umbro, WKYT. More information about the Powell County Animal Shelter, including how you can get in contact with them about their available animals, can be found on our website at WYMT.com. As we first reported Sunday night at 11, a father and son are dead after a fire in Letcher County. On Sunday morning, neighbors say they heard an explosion-like sound. Jerry Martin lives a couple of doors down from the house and says several people tried to help the men out of the home but were unsuccessful. She says their community on Henry Hutton Road is shaken up by the fire. They are really good people and they're willing to help however they can. And um, it, even after the event, neighbors are checking on neighbors to see how they're dealing with having experienced this tragedy. Martin says they tried breaking windows and breaking down the back door to get the men out of the home, but were unsuccessful. We now know the name of the person who was killed in a motorcycle crash in Corbin. The Whitley County coroner identified the person as 71 year old Carrie Taylor. The crash happened yesterday around 7 p.m. The coroner says Taylor's motorcycle went off the road before hitting a tree. 
We also know the name of the person that was killed in a crash last Friday in southwest Virginia. 74 year old Nancy Pauley of Jonesville, Virginia died at the scene. The crash happened on Route 58 A in Lee County, Virginia. Officials said Polly was not wearing a seatbelt at the time of the crash. Several law enforcement agencies teamed up to arrest a federal fugitive from Virginia in Laurel County. Authorities say 71 year old Byron Howard was involved in a pursuit that began in the Kiwi area when he left Moberly Bend Road and hit a tree. They say Howard fired two shots at police before surrendering. He was taken to the hospital to be treated for cardiac issues. He's facing several charges, including attempted murder of a police officer. He will be held in the Laurel County Detention Center after he's released from the hospital. School leaders and first responders say they want to practice to be prepared for a tragedy. Mercer County firefighters and first responders staged a school bus crash yesterday. It comes near the anniversary of one of the nation's deadliest bus crashes in Kentucky. Mercer County Superintendent Jason Boer survived that crash that happened back in May of 1988 in Carrollton. Boer says Monday's event could help prevent further tragedies from happening in the future. This is one of the positive things. That's the educational piece, I call it, uh, to where we're able to educate every, everyone on how they would respond to be more efficient, more effective if something like this ever occurred again. First responders and community leaders were blinded on purpose to give a realistic look at what smoke-filled school buses look like after a crash. The realism also included confusion with what to do with multiple people in different situations. Now that early voting is wrapped up ahead of today's primary election in Kentucky, more people took advantage of the early voting option this year. Secretary of State Michael Adams says more than 75,000 Kentuckians cast their ballots during the three days of early voting. That's up about 2,500 people compared to last year's May primary. Similar to last year, the Secretary of State says most early voters were Republicans. And here's some of the races we will be following today. In the race for the 95th District State Representative, which covers Floyd and Pike Counties, Brandon Spencer and David Pennington will square off in the Republican primary. In the race for the 41st Circuit Commonwealth's Attorney on the Republican side, longtime incumbent Gary Gregory will take on Haley Joe Fields. That area covers Clay Leslie and Jackson County. And there will also be two races in Pulaski County that involve the Somerset City Council. In Ward 3, Barbara Beckham, Brent Fleming, Mike Honeycutt, and Brannon Wilden are all vying for that spot. And in Ward 5, incumbent Jerry Girdler will face Jeanette Hislope and Margaret Dick. And there are two areas in eastern Kentucky that are having a wet dry vote. Folks will vote to decide whether or not alcohol can be sold in Fleming Neon in Letcher County. And that vote will also happen for all of Knott County. You can see all of our election coverage and the latest results today on the WIMT News app. That app is free to download from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. You can just scan that QR code that you see on your screen to download. Secretary of State Michael Adams is being honored for an award for those who show bravery and politics. The John F. Kennedy Library Foundation awarded him with the 2024 Profile and Courage Award. It recognizes public servants who risk their careers by putting the public interest ahead of their political standings. Secretary Adams is being acknowledged for his efforts for fair elections and his work to expand voting rights. This award was designed for people that show political bravery. It wasn't really conceived of that you have to show personal bravery in the face of threats. And Kentucky's gotten off easy compared to some other places, but there are poll workers in Georgia and Arizona who've got horrible threats, messages. Uh, their families have gotten them. Uh, it does take courage today to volunteer yourself, and so I'm grateful to all the election workers across America. Some past winners of the award include U.S. Presidents Gerald Ford and Barack Obama. A conference hosted on Monday at the Brakes Interstate Park discussed an interstate effort to clean up the region's rivers. The Central Appalachia Cleanup Conference brought people from West Virginia, Virginia, and Kentucky to the same table, workshopping plans and programs that could help clean the Leviza, Russell Fork, and Tug Fork rivers during the next 20 years. 
The event was all about growing and creating programs from within the attendees' respective communities to help get more public buy-in and make a bigger impact. But a coordinated long-term approach with um, um, is the only path you know, for success. And in many cases, we believe that it that, that doesn't start with cleanup. You have to invite people in, you know, on their dinner tables and meet with them where they are. The event included special speakers, work sessions, and lunch for those in attendance. Good Tuesday to you. Good start to the day. Minus some fog issues and spots this morning. Jacksboro, your visibility now is down less than a mile, so keep that in mind across northern portions of Tennessee. Ashland, your visibility at uh, two and a half still. Now the visibility at Harlan has uh, dropped to a seven a mile. So keep in mind uh, a little extra time heading into work and school this morning. Temperature wise, feeling fine. Maybe a touch cool toward Clintwood at 51 and the waves of clouds continue to stream across the Commonwealth early this morning, about another hour, hour plus that we deal with these waves of clouds. Otherwise, it's just simply sunny to partly cloudy as we head through today. Feeling good, feeling very warm though, and no issues on the roadways, minus encountering the slightest risk of a pop-up shower this afternoon. A high today in hazard up to 86. More about that slight risk today, and then when we really increase the chances of precipitation, first alert seven-day forecast in just a few moments. Olivia. Thanks, Tim, and thank you for joining us. The time is now 640, still to come on Mountain News this morning. When we return, President Biden backs Israeli leaders after an international call to arrest Netanyahu.